Happy Friday! Our animals were disappointed that the St. Patrick's Day Parade at the Kansas City Zoo was canceled, so we came up with a new plan. My name is May, and I am so excited to experience this with all of you at home. There is already magic in the air as we are only seconds away from seeing a delightful array of amazing animals. Last year, the parade attracted an impressive number of attendees here at the zoo. And this year, since we are responsibly practicing social distancing, it is just a few of us with all of you watching from home. Our animal ambassadors can't wait to see how many fans watch this parade. We are making history today. Look, here comes our first animal. Why begin the parade with a walk when you can ride in style? Always dressed ready for St. Patrick's Day in her scaly best, please welcome our green iguana, Gigi. Gigi waits all year for St. Patrick's Day. And you can't tell from looking at her face, but she was the most disappointed about the parade being canceled. Now, she is psyched to be here with her fans today. You'll notice that she was riding on a finely crafted tree perch where she can comfortably lead this parade. She decided not to ride on it, but that's fine. <clears throat> Check out her long toes and muscular legs to help her climb trees. What about that super long tail? That helps iguanas to balance when relaxing in the trees. Green iguanas are perfectly designed to live in the trees. Even Gigi's beautiful green color helps her to camouflage in the forest. Thanks, Gigi. Look at that beautiful lizard. Our next animal is rolling his way onto your screen and into your hearts. Please welcome Blue the Chinchilla. Blue is using his ball for exercise today and would like to remind us all to take some time for self-care while we're stuck at home. Wouldn't it be great if we all had a fancy travel ball like this? What a fun way to practice social distancing and get your tiny chinchilla steps in. You go, Blue. But don't work too hard. One of my favorite things about chinchillas is that they literally have the thickest, softest fur. Blue has 50 to 75 hairs growing out of each of his hair follicles. Humans only have two or three hairs per follicle. That lush fur helps chinchillas to stay warm in the chilly Andes Mountains, but it also means they can overheat easily. Go have a cool down, Blue. Time for a nap. <laughs> <clears throat> Beautiful. It's so fluffy. <laughs> so those nice big ears that Blue has help him to cool down if he does get a little too overheated. That's one way that animals help to stay cool. Here at the zoo, we like to call that ear conditioning. <laughs> That's a corny joke. <laughs> Thanks, Blue. Okay. <clears throat> Next, this sweet looking lady is a very good girl, but she is no ordinary domesticated dog. Coco is a New Guinea singing dog and she has a special talent. You guessed it, singing. New Guinea singing dogs are much more solitary than other species. That means they prefer to live alone instead of in a pack. So Coco can actually harmonize with other singing dogs in the distance to let them know she's in the area. That way they know to give her space. Talk about social distancing, both social and distant. She may look a lot like your dog at home, but she is very special. Her species is so rare and hard to find, they have only been photographed a few times in the wild. So you might want to take a screenshot to capture your very own photo of Coco. What an opportunity. Look at that pretty girl. Good girl, Coco. <laughs> I wonder who's gonna be next. So far we've seen a New Guinea singing dog, a green iguana, and a chinchilla. Who could it be? I bet it'll be something huge. <laughs> oh, wow, look at all those legs. <laughs> this giant African millipede could be a parade all by himself if he walked. <laughs> he looks like he's taken a little snooze. That's cool. <laughs> this is the largest existing species of millipede. They can actually get up to 15 inches long. That's more than a foot. He might look creepy crawly, and he is but this little guy is a super important part of the ecosystem. Millipedes are detritivores. 
They like to eat all the dead leaves, rotten fruit and veggies, and other plant materials that we don't want. They're like a tiny cleanup crew for the earth. Then they put all that good stuff back into the soil so that new things can grow. So next time you see a creepy crawly like this in your backyard, say thank you for all their hard work. Thanks, little millipede. Oh my gosh, what is that? <laughs> I think you all are going to be shocked at this next creature. <laughs> one flew the coop. <laughs> it's not one, but two beautiful fluffy chickens riding in a wagon. <laughs> we are truly making history here today, folks. Blossom and Bubbles, our two Polish chickens, are having the time of their life being treated like the royalty they are. I truly don't know who is more thrilled, the chickens or me, or Kate the chicken chauffeur. <laughs> Let's all just take a moment to soak in the majesty of this situation. Blossom and Buttercup, you gorgeous gals. These two are, like I said, Polish chickens, which is a kind of chicken that is bred specifically to be beautiful. They're not so good at laying eggs, and you can tell they're not the meatiest bird out there. So they are clearly just here to be admired, and they are definitely living their best life right now. Get it, girls! <laughs> Chickens in a wagon. <laughs> Who? I'm sure all of you at home are guessing what our next animal will be. It's Rowl, the spectacled owl. This handsome, distinguished gentleman loves silent flights at night and rodent dinners for two. He's in his early 30s and he is definitely judging all of us right now. Just kidding. Did you know that an owl's eyes take up two thirds of his skull? That does not leave a lot of room for a brain. So Raoul may not be the one to ask when you need help with your math homework, but he is an excellent hunter. In the wild, spectacled owls can catch rabbits, skunks, and even opossums. That's like the same size as him. How does he do that? Wow, Raoul, you really are a handsome, distinguished gentleman. <laughs> Raoul the owl, everyone. All right, next up, not a bird, not a plane, it's Bluey, the blue-tongued skink. Like other skinks, Bluey is a lizard with very short legs and a long body. He's kind of like the corgi of lizards. Look at that cute little waddle. Native to Australia, Bluey's shape helps him to blend in with all the native snakes. And that bright blue tongue he's got that you may or may not see, that's not only a very on-trend fashion statement, you know, blue is the color of the year this year, but it's also a warning for potential predators. Would you want to eat something with a blue tongue? I don't think that I would. That does not sound very tasty. Looks like he got a little snack there. Maybe we'll see the tongue, maybe not. Ah, oh, there he goes. Wow, Bluey the blue tongue skink. <laughs> Fascinating. Okay. Finally, we have one of our favorite animal ambassadors here at the zoo, Lucy the bare-eyed cockatoo. <laughs> also called the little corella, this bird also comes from Australia, and they're known to live in huge flocks of up to several thousand birds. Wow, Lucy, look at you. <laughs> She's really showing off. <laughs> so even though she may be called a little Corella, Lucy has a big personality, as you can probably tell. Being social birds, little Corellas love to play 
and show off and fly around. They talk to each other and have extended conversations and gossip about all the other little Corellas. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks she's the star of the show. She's like, you can put a chicken in a wagon, but there is still me. <laughs> One of Lucy's favorite tricks to show off is her ability to hang upside down. In the wild, she would use that skill to grab fruit hanging from branches. I've also heard, oh, is she gonna do it? We'll see. She has a mind of her own today. <laughs> wow, look at that. Amazing, good job, Lucy. I've also heard that she is a fantastic dancer, so I think we may be able to see her do that. Um, if not today, then some other time this week. <laughs> oh yeah, Lucy. <laughs> That's all right, she's already shown us her flying skills for the day. Thanks, Lucy. Oh, and wow, because we couldn't get enough of them, the chickens in a wagon are back. Blossom and Bubbles have stolen the show. For those of you wondering at home, Blossom is the saucy blonde here and Bubbles is the spicy brunette. They are sisters and like all of the animals who participated in today's parade, they are some of our education animal ambassadors. You'll be seeing more of all of these animal friends and more in the coming weeks as we share more fun behind the scenes videos and updates about what we're up to at the Kansas City Zoo.